What's going on today guys? Welcome back to the episode of Plugin Police. Today we'll be taking a look at Isotope Ozone 11. I feel like I must have hit my head or something. Didn't they just release Ozone 10? Oh, that was a year ago. I must have actually hit my head. Don't skateboard guys. You gonna drop some ad libs today? <laughs> oh my god. Can't ever do that again. It's gonna become old. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Ozone 10 was received decently. I would say it was lukewarm. The new modules were not super impressive in my opinion, but they weren't awful either. For transparency's sake here, Isotope did send me a new copy. I did not break in and steal it like I did before. They sent me a not for resale license, meaning I won't be selling it to any one of you guys. So keep this in mind the entire time I'm doing this review. I cannot be trusted. To be honest though, I would have reviewed it even if they didn't send me a copy. It was, I was planning on just using the trial. Anyways, recently Isotope and Native Instruments saw it upon themselves to carpet bomb us with a bunch of new plugins. Ozone 11 is an all-in-one mastering tool. They claim it is an industry standard mastering suite. I'm sure there are quite a few people who would like to challenge that claim. I'm not gonna challenge it though. Not that I agree with it. I just don't, I don't really care. I personally believe it is the best, if not one of the only all-in-one mastering software softwares whether you are self mastering or mastering for a client if you're mastering for a client you might want to go a little bit beyond that though so i was watching the ozone 11 videos earlier and i couldn't help but notice that they have the same guy doing their videos again we're here to negative values a brown noise profile brown noise brown noise brown noise and I just hope they let this guy go. I don't know how long he's been a hostage for them, but clearly he's been awake for days, if not weeks. His bags under his eyes have bags under his eyes. Anyways, this whole video today is just about freeing whatever his name is. We must, he must be freed, okay? So let him go, Isotope. You know what you've done. You've done wrong. I will not stand for this. Blink if you need help, sir. I can help you. Okay, so a few things worth noting here. VST2 is no longer supported. It's VST3 as far as VSTs are concerned. It's also working with AAX. All plugin formats are 64-bit only, and there's a 10-day free trial. They have three different versions, the $39 Elements version. Don't do it, it's bad. It virtually has nothing in it. Don't get that shit. People always tell me, oh, the Elements version's on sale. Don't get it, don't buy it, okay? Anyways, I believe the price of the Elements version is normally $49. The standard version is 149. It doesn't have the Clarity module, doesn't have the Stim Focus module low and focus module is not there but eh, you'll be fine without it it doesn't have the spectral shaper module it doesn't have the vintage modules you can't use the modules separately as plugins either it has to be the full ozone as a plugin normally the price of this one is 199 dollars you're probably like weaver i don't know what the fuck any of these things are right now what are you saying don't worry i'm gonna go over what all those are and give my thoughts on them here in a minute just trying to let you know what the different price points are and what you get with them the advanced version is 299 dollars normally 399 and it comes with everything now there were some problems I ran into with the upgrade pricing. I don't know if it's just me. Actually, I know it's not me because when I did my news video announcing this, I got quite a few comments of people saying, hey, I'm experiencing the same issue here. So I think it's a bug or they're just assholes. I'm not sure which one it is. Sorry, guys. I know I know you sent me the plugin for free, but um, call it like I see it. And I don't know if I see an asshole or a bug. It's kind of far away right now. Anyways, my issue I had with the pricing was that even though I own the Ozone 10 advanced version, it only offered me just the full version for $2.99. So my loyalty offer is paying the exact same amount regardless of whether or not I own it, which uh, that doesn't seem correct. I don't know. So either they don't value loyalty or it's just a bug. I don't know. That is, that is my conclusion here. I'm gonna go through this part in super speed to keep retention up. Don't leave our cursey with bad mixing and mastering for uh, 1,000 years. So if you don't wanna take chances, don't leave. Okay, so Ozone 11 has clarity, upward compression, EQ, impact, stabilizer, imager, master rebalance, low and focus, spectral shaper, dynamic EQ, dynamics, exciter, match EQ, maximizer, and the mastering assistant. <laughs> I feel like those are mostly self-explanatory based off their names. If you didn't catch what I said there, you can slow it down to half speed. Okay, so the first new thing they added the clarity module. It shapes the audio towards a pink noise profile by default. And if you move the slider to the left, it shapes it more towards brown noise and more to the right is white noise. And obviously the fader or whatever, I don't even know what these things are that they have. It's like in between a fader and a knob. Let me know down in the comments what we should call these things. I can't really come up with a good name for them. When you move that fader up, it applies the effect more intensely and down obviously less intense. So it has 256 bands. It doesn't go below roughly 250 Hertz. We'll just say 256 hertz for continuity. This is definitely very useful as it can make your mix sound a bit clearer and cleaner.
fucking this bitch and I won't give her a chance. So why would I run it on you? My example was pretty subtle here, but I feel like this is a real world use of it. Obviously it was game matched. If you enjoyed this song, it's by Leaf Face. It's not out yet, but I will have a link to him in the description if you want to check him out. The song the Isotope demonstrates this on in their video is a bit more drastic. If there are certain frequencies that do not fit one of these noise profiles, which uh, the pink noise profile is pretty common for mixing, it'll adjust it up or down. This makes use of spectral shaping and they have several other modules that make use of spectral shaping as well too, but in different manners. Low in focus, I always thought this one was pretty mid to be honest, does a similar thing, but only focuses on the low end and focuses on either the punchy or smooth qualities of it. The spectral shaper is more for attenuation as opposed to brightening. It also uses 64 bands instead of 256. Now the stabilizer their shapes or profile more accordingly to specific genres or a reference track that you specify. The stem focus is a pretty interesting idea. Essentially, it allows you to focus your processing on specific elements within the mix. In particular, it gives you options for the drums, bass, and vocals. The proper way to use this is you have a different instance of ozone before the main instance, and you pick whichever thing you're trying to focus on, apply whatever processing you'd like to apply, and voila, you've done it. If I had to guess, it makes use of this through the master rebalance algorithm. I also think this is the same algorithm they use in Isotope RX's music rebalance tool, which is still pretty primitive in terms of isolating elements. My basis for this is due to my experience that when I delta something after using stem focus, I can hear tiny bits of other elements bleeding through still. For instance, you could have the EQ just going through the drums before running into the actual ozone chain. This could be useful for somebody who doesn't have access to the stems or maybe wants to tweak it a little bit before going to the master chain. In this instance here I have the compression focusing on the drums before running it into the main ozone Isotope themselves claims that this will eliminate the need to ask for stems or anything of the sort in the future, and I do think that is a bit of a stretch. While it is useful and could help a bit, nothing will beat actually tweaking the mix. Another thing they added is the transient slash sustain modes for 10 of the modules. Essentially for each of these modules, you can edit it in the normal way, or you can switch to transient slash sustain mode, meaning you can put whatever effect you're using on just the transients or just the sustain. This could be very useful, for instance, while you are putting an EQ on the transients to boost out the transients a bit, to have the kick or snare, etc., pop out a bit more. Keep in mind though, this will boost all the transients. So if the vocal transients come through at the same time, those are gonna be boosted as well too. This definitely has a lot of uses though. For instance, you could have the imager wider for the transients and it'll make the overall song sound a bit wider because you'll hear those transients a little bit wider than the sustain or vice versa, however you wanna apply it. Basically, this goes as deep as you'd like it to. And I think this is one of the more powerful things that they added in Ozone 11. They also added upward compression to the maximizer module. Essentially what upward compression does is bring up the lower lower volume sounds within your mix. I personally never use upward compression and mastering, but it seems like this one could be useful in small doses. It should honestly have a warning label on it though, because this will deep fry your mix really fast. Mix this with the clipping module and you will have a grease fire. For those of you that don't know, Ozone has a mastering assistant which helps you master your tracks. It gives you a bunch of suggested settings and modules to use for your mix down after analyzing it. They made some improvements to it, including the vocal balance feature, which will basically analyze when a track has vocals and give you the option to move the vocals up or down in volume. It basically just does this through the master rebalance tool though. So you could technically do it already before this, but they just made it easier for newbies who don't know how to fiddle with those settings. Sorry guys, I had to clean up some bodies. If I look greasy for some reason, that's what happened. Anyways, I also think the mastering assistant hasn't quite reached its full potential yet. They could definitely do better on this, or it hasn't even reached half its potential in my opinion. It seems like every time they release a new version of Ozone, the mastering assistant focuses on whatever the new modules are and only implements those for the most part. I never see the mastering assistant implement the exciter, the dynamics, any of the vintage modules, spectral shaping, just to name a few. And I guarantee quite a few of these could be useful during mastering. I find myself adding harmonics pretty often. Whoever is making the mastering assistant at Isotope 
desktop has to know they're cutting corners with this because it's not taking into account all the modules it has while making decisions for the master. Another feature I've been enjoying with Ozone 11 so far has been the Delta button. They've added the Delta button to every module. It allows you to hear the difference between the processed and unprocessed audio, which makes it easier to hear exactly what processing you have done. It makes it easier to know when you've overdone something if it wasn't so obvious to you beforehand. Obviously, some DAWs and plugins already have this feature, so they didn't just invent it out of thin air, but it's definitely a nice addition in Ozone. Here's an example of it in action. I have a compressor in my mastering chain. I'm showing the before and after, and I press the Delta button afterwards, showing the difference in the processing. All alone, oh darling. I can share my love with you, but no one knows yeah, when life gets hard. Now I'm not going to review every little thing in Ozone because there's going to be quite a bit of overlap with my previous Ozone reviews. If you want to check out those features, you can look at those reviews. But I'm going to mention a few things here and there. Personally, I've always found the impact tool kind of useless. It's just really subtle. The stabilizer is all right in small doses. Don't ever use the delay modes in the imaging tool while you're mastering. This has been my free tip for the day. Don't do that. The master rebalance tool can be useful for masters that need the instruments rebalanced a little bit. You know, if the drums are a little too quiet or the vocal are a little too quiet or loud or whatever. The exciter is a great tool. I find myself boosting the high end in pretty much every single master, either with this or the Waves Aural Exciter. I personally never really gotten into the vintage modes very much. If you guys have any opinions about those, I'd love to hear them. One suggestion I have for the mastering assistant is maybe asking what bit depth you are gonna be rendering out to, because then it can make dither suggestions as well too. I also thought about this a little more though, and maybe the reason they don't do this, well, A, maybe because they're lazy, but also B, because a lot of people using the the mastering assistant are beginners and dithering is a pretty complex thing and you don't really want to dig into that unless you kind of have an idea what you're doing. This review wouldn't be complete if I didn't do a complete before and after of a master I did with Ozone 11. So here is a quick before and after on a song of mine which I've definitely not overplayed on this channel at this point. I swear I'll release it and not use it in examples anymore in the future. I LUFS matched the comparison, I think it came up pretty transparent, which is generally what you want in mastering if the mix down is not terrible. Another issue with this plugin and all of Isotope's plugins is that the resize function doesn't really change much about it. When you resize it, it makes the plugin bigger, but all the details in the plugin, including the text, stay the same size. You may be like, Weaver, what's the big deal? Well, if you're on a high resolution monitor, you may struggle to be able to read the details, especially if you're not really close to the monitor. Okay, let's talk about some alternatives now. Now, the main one that pops in my head is FabFilter, maybe Waves, Sonable. For FabFilter, you're gonna be looking at buying their bundle or the individual plugins. Either way, it's gonna be much more expensive than Ozone. The bundle is the low, low price of $899. Holy shit. The FabFilter Pro Q is a really solid EQ. Pro C is a great compressor. I still use both of those to this day. Pro L is a great limiter. It has L in the name though. The thing with FabFilter is it's all quality and no gimmicks, no weird tools like you'd get in Ozone, which could be a plus or negative depending on how you look at it. You definitely have to know what you're doing with it though because there is no mastering assistant. Next alternative, if I could think of it's online mastering services. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Another one I mentioned is Sonable. You could use a smart limiter, pure limit uh, combined with smart EQ or smart comp, depending on what you're trying to do with it. In Waves, they have a whole assortment of plugins you could use. Personally, I don't think the sound quality changes too much depending on what limiter or maximizer you use. So at the end of the day, I personally don't think that matters too much. Your mix quality as well as the balance will always be the most important thing. With all that being said, Ozone 11 is most likely the most powerful all-in-one mastering suite you're going to get on the market. And I'm not saying that because they sent me a copy, but I'll also throw this in there too. It has never been easier to overcook your master than with this tool. There's just way too many small tools you could use within it. It's great for an all-in-one tool, but it's also a bit overwhelming at this point. It can completely enhance a track if used correctly, and it can completely ruin a track if used incorrectly. I do think this is one of their best upgrades in a while. If this sounds interesting to you, I recommend getting a demo, okay? Always get a demo, never listen to a reviewer, and just buy it. You guys may have noticed recently I haven't been doing the score in my plugin police videos and I think I'd rather let my words do the scoring. It's hard to give an accurate score for things especially when things are going wrong. There's just too many variables and you shouldn't be basing your decision on whether or not to get a plugin or even get the trial on a score. I'd rather people listen to the sentences I speak 
and then decide if they want to get the trial based on that. If you press the like button on this video, I will pick you up in a spaceship outside your house. You have to press it really fast and run outside. If you don't see me out there, it's because you weren't fast enough. If you made it to the end of the video, comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other plugin police videos. I'll link the plugin police video of the LOL comp plugin. I thought that was a pretty funny one. Yes, it's really called LOL comp, a lol comp, if you will. Make sure you check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel or consider getting Demon Time merch. I'll see you guys next time. Incorporated.